Alrighty, we've got a 4-on-4 four four cube draft today. you love to see it. we got myself, Team Jbro, Masapo, the Mandrel Man himself, and Alpha Frog battle against Luis Salvato, Nathan Stoyer, ooh, Player of the Year or World Champ or some combination of those things, uh, Mac the Knife and Falcon Eye. So, a good squad, less good of a pack, Library of Alexandria, huh? Alright, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'll take the library. I, I, I like Pluto Delta. I kind of want to just take Pluto Delta over library. But you know what? I'm just going to take the library, and we'll try to draft a library deck. What's coming back? Let's see. Reprieve, Path, Talisman, Delta is four. Dolly is five. Grasp is six. Bone Crusher is seven. Yeah, a little variance there. Let's first pick library. So what you want to do when you first pick Library of Alexandria is you want cheap removal, and you want... Acceleration. Obviously, Moxes are just the best thing possible with Library, but that's because Moxes are just the best thing possible. So here, there's like Lotus Cobra and Burst Lightning, Gaia's Cradle, I mean, Fallen Shinobi, Urtai, Elite Spellbinder. This is just not that good of a pack. <laughs> I mean, Library is good in green decks when you go like Library and then turn two Elf and you play like Off Curve, but with extra cards. It's also just Gaia's Cradle is just a really good card. I think I'm just going to take the Gaia's Cradle and see where that goes. I just don't really want to take a Lotus Cobra or a Burst Lightning second pick or an Elite Spellbinder. Like, at least Cradle, I think, is a very strong card. Okay, so this pack has Oath of Druids, which doesn't go with Cradle. Remand, which is good. Chain Lightning, Chromatic Star. I think I'm going to take Remand here. Remand is also a pretty good card with Library, and it's just a good card in general. I don't feel very committed to either Library or Cradle right now. I mean, obviously I'm going to put Library in basically any deck I make, but I don't know that it's forcing me in this particular direction. Okay, well this Cradle isn't going to work out too well, because I think I'm just going to take Teferi here. Though I could also take Stern Scolding. One Drops are pretty good with Library, hmm. and I could be just take blue cards and relegate this cradle just one down one row because so far it's not working out and then try to wheel well to fairy wheel one well there's actually there's dam to fairy thraben inspector stern scolding bivouac spars headquarters a lot of blue white cards let's just take stern scolding let's just see how that goes it is if it's in your opening hand it is effectively a removal spell and even in the late game it can do some cool stuff also countering solitude or grief is always nice Days, Tundra, Brainstorm. I don't like Days with Library. That's actually not a very good combo. Days is a good card, though. I might just take Tundra because I, I really do think Blue-White is a good combination to go here. All right, let's just take Tundra and kind of aim at Blue-White. I just think I don't even really see Treachery in packs anymore. Like, Treachery is fine. It's just a five-mana spell. I'm not really going to be too concerned about that. So I, I'm going to take uh, Tundra here, passing on Days and Brainstorm. Don't really expect anything back. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, uh, I guess, assuming no one takes Pia or Kirio, I still get a playable card back, though it might be like a concealed courtyard or something. It could be a Brainstorm. It's not 0% that no one else wants Brainstorm. I seem to like it a little more than most people. And... I know that we're not going to get path. Obviously, like sword, swords to plowshares and like pack two would be something that would be ideal with this sort of setup. Balance is another good card for this kind of thing. Though balance library is also like a little dubious. <laughs> you kill all the creatures, but then you have to discard all your cards. Oh, there's a crucible. I do like crucible. There's also spell queller and containment priest. I don't think I'm in the crucible zone. I think spell queller is solid. It's just okay. But then again, so is Containment Priest, and I think Spell Queller fits nicely into this blue-white plan. Oh, Settle the Wreckage. I, I've cast this card before. I do like it. Uh, yeah, this could be a Settle deck. I definitely see that. Let's try it. Let's try Let's try blue-white control with Settle the Wreckage. We missed out on a Guy's Cradle. or a, a, we, the, the pick where we took Guy's Cradle, I could have taken like Burst Lightning, and that's just not that good of a card either, so... Would be really happy if Teferi Hero of Dominaria came back, but I think Stern Scolding, just a one-mana spell, is more what this deck 
needs to make sure it has than five mana cards that are good. Ooh, I love Spell Pierce. All right, we're taking Spell Pierce over Reckoner Bank Buster. You might notice some new additions. Again, the, the way that we're playing Sam Rolf's Cube and when you 3-0, you get to change a card. And I have decided the next card I want to add. Hmm, have I decided that? I haven't. The last card I added was Dream Hall. So far I've added Tough Cookie, which you actually saw in the draft earlier, uh, Dream Hall's Shadow Spear, and Teferi's Puzzle Box, and Shardless Agent are the ones I've added. Um, but I don't know what would be next. We'll see, we'll see. High Tide came back. Ooh. Engine Explosives actually seems like it could be okay. I could take Puzzle Box, hope to open a whole Breacher. That's a sick combo. I could just take Explosives, though, and have a, another cheap card to play against people. Oh, there's Turnabout. I could have taken the High Tide, but I think here I just take Urtai Resurrected. Huh, all the green cards wheel, but so did both blue-black cards. Urtai seems better than Shinobi currently. And I guess I could take Mesmeric Fiend, because we could be we could be Esper or blue-black. Oh, there's a blue-white land, sure. Okay, and then... Oh, wow, so someone took P and Kira Nalar. Now there's a Liliana and a Concealed Courtyard. I think I'll just take Concealed Courtyard. I think... I'm not sure which colors I'm going to be. I'll pass someone a last pick, Arbor Elf, because uh, I think there's a chance I want to play Elish Norn, or Sided in at least. Okay, I've got two black cards and one black land, two blue-white lands. Really only two white cards. All right, I kind of like this start. And then let's see, a Mana Vault. I mean, I'll take it. Really bad mana vault deck, unfortunately. Like any other, any of the other artifacts in that vein would have been better. But yeah, we'll still take it. I don't think there's a. It's really reasonable to pass up here. Pass Salvato, a Chrome Mox, a Caracas, all that stuff. But I'll, I'll just take the mana vault here. I just don't really have a way to spend that mana. Maybe Elish Norn. Sadly, Teferi. If I knew I was getting mana vault, I might have taken Teferi over Stern Scolding, but. You, drafting would indeed be easier if you could tell the future. <laughs> Let's see what else we get here. Uh, ooh, Atroxa. I do like Atroxa. And I just picked up Mana Vault. There's also <laughs> Hidden Strings. Uh, someone added that, I guess. Uh, Verdant Catacombs, which can get Spar's Headquarters. So that would be kind of like a blue-black white land. Spellseeker, but nothing to get yet. I think I just take a Troxa because it's just so broken, and I don't know how or if I'll be using it exactly, but I don't really want to pass an Atroxa, so let's do that. I have Spar's Headquarters. That's three of the Atroxa colors already. So I could just be hardcast Atroxa mode. Oh, there's Urza and Time Spiral. Wow, I really wish I took High Tide Turnabout. Um, I don't, I mean, I love Time Spiral in general, but this doesn't really even look like a Time Spiral deck. I think I'm just taking Urza. I don't know about these black cards, but Urza with Explosives, Mana Vault. It's also just like a fine card to cast for four mana in general, so. And then now there's a Baleful Strix, a Lorien Revealed, a Colonnade. I think it's got to be Lorien Revealed, though. Lorien Revealed currently is blue-white-green fixing. Also a good card to cast. Yeah, let's take that over Baleful Strix and Colonnade. I've, I've been really impressed with Lorien Revealed. Now there's Impulse and a Blue-White Talisman. I don't think anything else here is really that close. I mean, we're not artifacty enough to play Thought Monitor, sadly. I think I'll take the Talisman. It's generally good with, uh, and I think Blue-White is definitely the one I want to take. It's generally good with Urza. Oh, now there's Currency Converter, Nettle Cyst. Converter with Urza is a pretty good way to, to get things going. It can also get you five colors for Atroxa. All right. I'll take Converter over Nettle Cyst. Thirst for Discovery, him. Yeah. Resto. There's Zurin Orb. Had I taken the, the Crucible? There's also Dark Confidant. This could actually be a Dark Confidant deck. I don't have that much white. Like, I have a Settle the Wreckage and a Spell Queller. And then, I guess, Atroxa. Maybe I just take Dark Confidant here. My black cards are way better. I don't think Gilded Drake is that big of a thing to miss out on. All right. I'm, I'm in for Dark Confidant. And I'll probably place white too at this point. It feels like the man is there. Explosives is not looking that good. I don't think I'm playing any of these cards down here. But we're definitely playing blue. There's Shardless Agent. Leyline Binding. 
Oh, they even have the Spars headquarters. Yeah, I like it. Because this is going to be a three, two or three mana ley line binding. Seems good enough for me. Don't want blue, green, or blue, red cards, I don't think. And Lingering Souls came back. So did Taiga, but that doesn't do much for me besides making Leyline Binding cheaper. Same with Zeotor's Proving Ground. And there's an Oracle as well, which I could get Oracle in here if I really wanted to. I have a Spars Headquarters and a Lorien Revealed, but let's just take Lingering Souls. I think Lingering Souls is, is fine. Okay, so we're like kind of Esper mid-range. Yeah, this is this is this is a fine place to be. And maybe we'll run Settle the Wreckage, maybe not. Leyline Binding Dark Confront is unfortunately not that good of a combo. <laughs> uh, but could use a little bit more blue-black fixing. Certainly a blue-black land would be great, especially with Lorien Revealed. Have a pretty good amount of blue-white fixing when you count Talisman, Tundra, Spars, Headquarters, Lorien Revealed. So easy enough to play the white cards, uh, even if I don't pick up very many more. And... Yeah, need need a little bit more removal. I think we're a little light on that. So maybe the Subtle Wreckage does have to get in. And I don't really have anything to do with this Atroxa besides cast it. But honestly, I think Atroxa is still good enough to do that. I've got Mana Vault and Urza to help me. So, uh, yeah, I guess I will just take Damnation here. And we'll see where my mana ends up. I don't really like Imperial Seal or Fiery Islet. I guess I'll just take Razor Verge Thicket. Maybe I'll end up playing it. Oh, wow, that's a late expressive iteration. I guess I'll just take that. Passing a bunch of green cards. Oh, Impulse came back. Yeah, I was happy to take a little Impulse. Ooh, Dreadhorde Arcanist, a new addition to the cube. Okay, so currently I've got <laughs> four black cards and plus a little flashback on Lingering Souls, not counting Atroxa, and four white cards. <laughs> so <laughs> my mana doesn't quite support Settle the Wreckage Damnation. But it does support playing blue, black, and splashing white, or playing blue, white, and maybe splashing black. Uh, I guess I'll take cut down. That actually is a good removal spell. Last pick, bitter reunion. All right. Can we get a little time walk action here? I feel like I need to open something, something nice. Uh, no swords to plowshares though. I like that a lot more than fracture identity at this point. Swords is just awesome, and I, it's perfect with library. Okay, this is great. I'll take swords. I maybe wield Cryptic Command or Teferi or Fairy Mastermind if I'm lucky. There's a bunch of black-red cards that people might want and a Fracture Identity. All right. Swords to Plowshare is an easy pickup. I think we cut the Damnation. No, I think we cut the Settle. Maybe we cut Settle and Damnation. Or maybe we keep the Damnation. Hmm. I would trade this Stern Scolding for a Teferi Hero of Dominaria at this point, unfortunately. But here we are. Oh, I guess I don't really like Damnation with both Spellcaller and Mesmeric Fiend in my deck, so maybe I just try to cut both of them and see see what this pack looks like. Will I play Razor Verge Thicket is the other question. All right, this pack. Oh, well, I'm taking Orcish Bowmasters. Passing up on Chromehost, Seed Shark, Council's Judgment, Ponder. Scrubland would be a nice pickup. I would. Let's see. One, two, three. Some Maniac always takes Lotus Field four. Crater Hoof 5. Oh, there's a Minskin Boo also. Didn't even notice that. Well, I'm still taking the Bowmaster. It's way easier for me to cast, and I think they're both comparable. Wish I had a draw 7. Uh, yeah, there's a decent chance I get something back out of this pack. I, I wouldn't be shocked. Okay, so here we've got Displacer Kitten, which I guess is nice with Mana Vault. <laughs> it's pretty good with Urza, too. There's From the Catacombs, which is a pretty strong finisher. There's Snuff Out, which is an amazing removal spell. And there's a Skydiver. I kind of just want to take Snuff Out. I love Snuff Out. Yeah, Snuff Out feels like the pick to me. Though I could take From the Catacombs to bring back a Troxa. Like I can discard it to Currency Converter. But I guess that's the only combo. That seems a little thin. Let's just take Snuff Out and go with that. Oh, and there's Grief. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put, take Grief. I'll just cast it most of the time. That'll be fine too. It's also just the strongest card in the pack, so I don't really want to pass it. Oh, love Memory Lapse. And Rafine Scheming Seer is my three colors. This pack's strong enough. Rafine could easily wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's a natural order too. All right. This pack has been very good for me. Like, picking up 
memory lapse, swords to plowshares, snuff out, like the orcish bowmasters. Like the, I just got a ton of cheap interaction, which is really what you want with library and in general. The only thing is there's three more picks. I would love a watery grave. I think underground sea is already gone, but I don't really remember. It's a late Itali, but I can't do much with that. I think Godless Shrine is going to be my pick. Just a black-white land seems like what this deck could be interested in. Even if it can't get searched for with Lorien revealed. Oh man, that's such a late upheaval. Oh, this is a bad pack for me. I guess I just take the upheaval. <clears throat> I don't even know if I'm going to play it, but I don't need green-red lands. I can't play K-Command. Sword of the Make doesn't do anything for me. It's just the best card in the pack. It's not even a good combo of Leyline Binding, but whether or not I play it, I, I just think I should take up people out of that pack. And I mean, this is about the right number of playables. So. One more pick, a little Underground Sea. A little uh, Rafine's Tower, <laughs> wouldn't mind that either. Yeah, this deck feels like it's pretty good. I guess, so what's up people good with? It's good with Mana Vault and it's good with Urza. It's bad with Leyline Binding. Yeah, that, that's not so bad. It's bad with Spell Queller too. Okay. Oh, there's Rafine's Tower. Yes. I like Rona, Fire Eyes, Suspicious Stowaway. All those cards are fine, but I'm not passing up my Tri-Land, when, especially when I have a Lorien Revealed that I would like to, to make use of. All right, my mana actually just became great. So I think with basically a Tri-Land, a bunch of duels, in a Lorien Revealed and a Talisman, I feel pretty good that I can just play all these cards. I do... Let's see, what do I want? I do want to wheel the from the, the, from the Catacomb if I can. It'd be a nice little out to have a Troxa, but honestly, I will just put a Troxa in my deck thanks to Mana Vault, Currency Converter, and Urza getting me up to seven mana, some combo. Oh, Cryptic came back. I think I like Cryptic more than Restoration of a Ganjo here. Cryptic is very good, and my mana does, I believe, support it. Mm, now I need to take out... Well, now we're at seven, 16 lands plus Lorraine Revealed. I kind of would rather be 17 if we, can, if we can swing that. I mean, maybe I just don't play Upheaval. I could see siding an Upheaval against a slower matchup, but I kind of feel like... This isn't the best upheaval deck. It's got a bunch of anti-combos. It already has a Troxa as like an expensive kind of finish the game card. And I think a Troxa is going to do a better job of that. So we'll see. Oh man, no one took Crater Hoof or Lotus Field. I got kind of hosed. I, I thought I was going to wheel something better. Is Lotus Field any good in my deck? It doesn't have any combos, right? No, it really doesn't. I don't really want Red Black Talisman either. I guess I'll just hate the Crater Hoof. I think that's... The best thing I could be doing here. Mm, out of this pack, I just hate the Kiki Jiki. Would I put Deadly Dispute in the stack? Oh, it's kind of nice with Mana Vault. Lingering Souls, Bowmaster's Token. It's out for Dark Confront. All right, let me just take it. I'll think about it. Oh, Rafine came back. Okay, I want to try Rafine. Rafine sounds great. Okay, I'm not passing. I would even play Condemn, but I'm not passing it. A last pick of Tali, that's just too much. All right, let's see how this deck does. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see if uh, Rafine's good, but I, I kind of like the way this deck looks. So let me assemble it and we'll see. All right, last card I ended up cutting was the appropriately named Cut Down, and I uh, ended up playing a mix of Swamps and Islands. Don't even need a Plains. And playing Razor Verge Thicket and Spar's Headquarters as my green sources, which alongside Revealed for Headquarters and Currency Converter, Plus Deadly Dispute, I think I'll be able to play Atroxa. Uh, my team's got some pretty nice decks. So we've got uh, Mandrill Man on a channel sneak deck with like Gristlebrand, Archon, Triplicate Titan, Portal, Pest Infestation, Blightsteel. I like this deck. Also with like Entomb, Animate Dead. I think this deck's really good. The Frog, Alpha Frog has Time Walk, Mana Drain, Blue Red with like Time Warp, Time Spiral, Force of Will, Mystic Confluence. This deck looks amazing too. And then Jaybro's on Jund, Splashing, Minskin Boo, just black-green with Vault Key Demonic Tutor. So, like my teammates' decks, I'm playing against Nathan Stoyer around one here, and, oh yeah, I'll keep this hand. This is uh, the perfect one, two, three, four curve on the play. 
Okay, okay, not, not turning that down. I even have the right colored mana to cast all my spells, which is kind of cool too. So, if uh, Stern Scolding is good against him, then I think that this hand is great. If Stern Scolding's not, this hand's still pretty good, but of course, it, it is a lot better if, uh, if this thing does land. So, we'll see about this fool of a took here. Okay, Island, go. I mean, I guess... I do want to use turn scolding on turn one. The ideal scenario would be like, oh, I guess he can't play grief because that's in my deck. I'll say he, he pitch cast grief and I turn scolding it. That's always a good one. Okay. And so by trial. All right. Well, let's go Ms. Merrick Fiend and see what's up. It'll help me plan out my turn and all that. Oh, geez. Okay. Scrubland, so no other land. Containment Priest, Elite Spellbinder, White Plume. So I think I'm going to take White Plume, leave you a bunch of white and black cards or white, blue, black cards that are not the easiest to play. And I, I'm going to want to Stern Scolding the... Elite Spellbinder, so I think I'm going to wait. Okay, Razor vs. Thicket's not actually that bad of a land to play this turn. Leyline Binding, not, not not looking fantastic here. Oh, the problem is if... Hmm. If Nathan goes end of turn unexpectedly absent and then plays White Plume. If he has drawn a land, it's really bad for me. I think I have to play Lingering Souls, actually. Because if he goes end of turn absent on top White Plume, it's just too much of a beating. He could play Containment Priest if he doesn't have the land. Okay, he's just going to play Containment Priest or wants to play it safer. Elite Spellbinder on Urza is a little annoying here. But at least Elite Spellbinder is not really doing that much in play because thanks to Lingering Souls. Yeah. I just think it's too bad if I pass there and he has the absent into White Plume play. All right. Draw. Oh, Talisman's actually kind of a nice draw. Talisman. Flashback Lingering Souls. And then now hit for two in the air here with Lingering Souls past the turn. I have, I can't let a Fallen Shinobi hit me. Though maybe I should have actually, hmm. I guess he doesn't have a fourth land here. Yeah, I'll just let the Containment Priest hit me here. And his hand is Elite Spellbinder, or sorry, uh, Unexpectedly Absent, Shinobi Teferi. No plays. All right, lands are fine. Non-lands are also fine. I actually don't hate Currency Converter here as just a card to draw. And he can end of turn absent the mesmeric fiend. I kind of actually feel like I should just be a little bit more conservative here. The problem is once Nathan has four mana, I can't let the stupid uh, fallen shinobi hit me. So let's just go loot here. And I think I actually just discard the stern scolding. It's not looking like it's going to do much for me. He knows about it and as far as I know, it doesn't have anything he can play. This is absent on the Mesmeric Fiend, I guess. Yeah. So White Plume can come down. The good thing is uh, my spirit tokens from Lingering Souls make battling for initiative actually pretty doable. All right, I'm going to take it again. He doesn't have the mana for Ninja because I want to play Rafine next turn. I think that's going to be awesome. I also am going to be able to hit a land drop once I take the initiative here. But Nathan, I think, did need to hit a land drop, so it was just that or nothing. And so I get to play Rafine, and I get to make a, a blocker off of uh, that the currency converter, which is nice. Mm, Lorien revealed. Uh... Let's just go Rafine and attack. Let's 
go attack with, I want to say two spirit tokens here. And hope he doesn't have path. Yeah, I think so. If he does, then so be it. And then connive. And I guess I discard Mesmeric Fiend in the library. Keep the Lorien revealed. I could also discard library and Lorien revealed and then use the currency converter to get a treasure and then cast Mesmeric Fiend. I mean, I guess I could discard Leyline Binding as well if I wanted to. But basically, I'm going to discard Library of Alexandria for sure. The question is, what is my second discard? How much do I care about Mesmeric Fiending this turn? It also costs me a Currency Converter activation. I could discard... If I discard the Mesmeric Fiend in Library, I could then cycle Lorien Revealed and play... Uh, one of my triomes, which would make it pretty easy to have to cast Leyline Binding the turn after. I've got two blockers for the Elite Spellbinder, not even counting Rafine, plus a token. So I'm going to have four blockers against three attackers. But Mesmeric Fiend also seems pretty good. Not hitting a land drop kind of sucks. And losing that blocker. All right, so let's discard Library. Let's discard Mesmeric Fiend. I will put them both in the converter. You are getting converted. And then I'm going to be able to play a land. Unfortunately, I don't have any triumphs that would let me cast Leyline Binding this turn. So I think I am going to Island Cycle this, though. And... I think I just get uh, Rafine's Tower, or probably Spara's Headquarters, because then I could draw a Swamp. And I already have one black. Do I, I have no double black cards, right? I have Grief. Nah, I have it. I have, that's actually fine, though, because I have a... Goop, Currency Converter. Oh, I've already played a land. Oh, this is during my Declare Attacker step. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a land off of the... off of the White Plume, or the Adventure. So actually, I did, huh, mm, no, I mean, I did that wrong then. Oh, I think I should have kept Mesmeric Fiend and played it off the land drop. <sighs> yeah, that would have been better. I, I just like blanked that I was going to go get a land, so, because now I am going to get a basic Swamp. Okay, well, I'll just play the Swan. I'll play the Sparta's headquarters, I think, still. And pass the turn. Okay, I've got three blockers, but I can have a fourth at a moment's notice. Oh, thought sees, sure. Take my Leyline Binding, that's fine. And what do we cast in here? Infernal Grasp on Rafine, paying the one. Okay. Mm, this really isn't the end of the world. Because I think I put, uh, I guess, Layla Mesmeric Fiend back in the graveyard. Then I go block, chump, trade. And then now I've got the initiative still. I still have two tokens, and I have an Urza that I can cast now. So, all right, this works out just fine. And you're at 10. Oh, yeah, we're going right to the forge here. We're forging up a different spirit. We're hitting for five. So now we've got lethal out with uh, if we get the initiative again. And we cast Urza. I guess I should... not not get dazed if I can avoid it. And pass the turn with Urza, a token, and a currency converter token. And I think we're doing pretty good. Mm, gonna have to have something pretty strong. I don't think Teferi Time Raveler is gonna do the trick here. 
What are we bouncing? Spirit token, sure. I mean, you have to get the initiative back or you just die. All right, nice. So let's, these are some really important cards to know about. So I gotta show my teammates what's up. But I am up a game. Rafine, Rafine did some good work. Rafine Currency Converter. It's actually a pretty sick little combo. Uh, so playing against Blue White, which is actually kind of nice because I'm passing. To, I was passing to Nathan, so we're the same colors, and I was passing to him, which is generally better. Uh, do I want settle the wreckage? I do want cut down. I know that, and certainly want stern scolding. Spell pierce with for Teferi seems pretty good, or an early thought seize or something like that. Maybe leyline binding is. Not what we want. No, Leyland Binding seems pretty good. I guess I could see cutting Deadly Dispute. It's not as good in a fast matchup. I'm not going to bring in Engine Explosives quite yet, but I'll be on the lookout. It's possible that I do want it. Okay. I am on the draw here. Oh, man. Look at this hand. A Library Snuff Out hand is just awesome. Okay, no plays, turn one for Nathan. Oh, that's a Library of Alexandria, thank you very much. Pick one, pack one, baby. Library will do some work. Just gotta make sure not to get like tempoed out. I mean, Adonto Vanguard's pretty good because I can't kill it with uh, Snuff Out. I think, hmm, I think I'm gonna go Island. Do I wanna do Island Go? Actually, it's awkward, but I'm not gonna play the Concealed Courtyard. I think I'm just going to play Mesmeric Fiend here. Take a turn off of Library. Stop any White Plumes. Uh, I guess I would, I guess I kind of wish I just left up Spell Pierce, but it's okay. I'll just take the Bank Buster anyway. And then Nathan's Hand is not able to cast Grasp, and I'll just save the Spell Pierce for Fracture Identity once we get to that point. I feel like we're doing pretty good here. I right, didn't draw a creature that turn, so let's go. Concealed courtyard down to seven, library back up to eight. And then I'm gonna play Talisman of Progress here. This has been a perfect library game. I'm just gonna wait here. I don't wanna attack into a containment priest. I mean, library when you have two free spells in Snuff Out and Grief, and then a one mana swords, a one mana spell pierce, and a two mana bowmasters, it's just fantastic. All right, I'm probably going to Swords that, but I'll, I'll just wait to see if Nathan does anything. No? Uh, all right. Let's just Swords the the Vanguard. I think that's probably fine. Draw. Draw, and then we're going to just go Land, I think, and hit. Because now I have Cut Down for and Spell Pierce and all that. And I'll just pass, and I guess if Nathan has nothing better to do, he'll probably cast Fractured Identity. Teferi Time Raveler. Um, it's actually fine. I'm gonna cast Bowmasters in response. And Bowmasters kind of hoses Teferi Time Raveler. Like, what do you do now? You can, if you bounce the, the Bowmasters, then the orc kills the Teferi. If you bounce the orc army, the Bowmasters easily kills the Teferi. I guess you could bounce the Mesmeric Fiend and cast your Bank Buster. Or you can plus one and have the Teferi live for a turn. Let's go seven, up to eight. Oh, actually, I think I should have cycled Lorien Revealed now that, I, now that I'm looking at it. Um... I should cycle this first, actually. I'm, I'm just not using this at this point. I'm just going to get a Tundra, I think. Land and cast Grief. You have three cards in hand. Fracture Identity, Infernal Grasp, and X. If X is a counterspell and you get to then Fracture Identity, the Bowmasters, that would be kind of annoying, but I don't feel like I would in a huge threat of losing. got something here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, Mandrill Man has won his round against Mac playing White Weenie. 
the animate deck can be really good against white weenie white weenie is great against everything so like there's no deck that off the top i would say has necessarily uh, is an is a bad matchup for white weenie but if white weenie doesn't have like i have the swords to plow shares i don't know who has the path like the winds of abandon where those cards are matter because some reanimator decks can just destroy them uh, reprieve oh so you're gonna lose the teferi Attack to fairy, attack to fairy, attack to fairy. And then I'm also still gonna pitch cast grief here. Getting ready to cut down. I, I'm, I'm not gonna be librarying anymore, but that's okay. Mm. Nathan's hand is containment priest, fracture identity, infernal grasp. Yeah, I'm gonna take fracture identity, leaving containment priest in infernal grasp. And that's not gonna be very close in terms of being good enough here. I'm glad I cast that before attacking. Urtai, huh? Um, I don't really care about Containment Priest, so I kind of feel like I'm just going to attack for two. Let that happen. And then I think cast Currency Converter. And I guess just pass the turn. Uh, do I want to play Lingering Souls? I kind of want to play Lingering Souls. So, if I go draw with Currency Converter, the thing is I kind of want to, if I draw a land, I kind of want to discard it so I can use it to make a treasure to play a Troxon next turn. So, that makes me think that I can play Currency Converter, maybe cast Lingering Souls and pass, and I'll have, I'm not, I, I'll take Urtai down, but I'll still have Spell Pierce up. And... I don't know how bad it is to have shields down for a second. Like, what could Nathan do? A lot of the things that go wrong still get spell pierced. So, I don't feel like it's like that dangerous to play Lingering Souls. And I would like to kind of get the clock going, though. I guess, I guess that'll do it. All right. 1-0, uh, beat Nathan in the, the battle of the Esper decks. Uh, and I'm going to be on to the next round. This looks like we got a good start to this draft. All right, we're off to a 3-0 start. Uh, J-Bro and Salvato still playing. I actually think J-Bro is going to lose. So we're 3-1 going into this game. And yeah, this is a totally fine hand. <laughs> I guess I could just turn to cast Lorien Revealed. And then I can Deadly Dispute away the Mana Vault. That that doesn't sound crazy to me, honestly. Falcon Eye is playing like a multicolor salvagers artifact style deck. I, I don't I don't even really know what's going on. His game two against uh Alpha Frog, he kept Island Chromatic Star and I like, didn't draw a second land or something, so didn't see tons of cards. <laughs> Speak of the devil. All right. Um, let's go ahead and just Fire off the Lorien revealed? Oh, interesting. Actually, let's go Talisman. We'll still have Spell Pierce up. I can still Lorien revealed next turn with, with Spell Pierce up if I want, and it lets me keep up Spell Pierce for uh, turn two. Not that I could Spell Pierce that, but... Plus, if I'm using up the Mana Vault, most of the mana I would spend here is already gone anyway. Like, it doesn't come back, so doing it a turn earlier isn't that big of a deal. Um, I guess I actually go library here, and I didn't draw black, which is kind of awkward, but uh, if I don't have to use Spell Pierce this turn, then then I'll get to library, and I would try not to use Spell Pierce. All right, I'll take one. I mean, if he plays a Tinker, I'll Spell Pierce it. I don't really have a choice there. I can't Spell Pierce that, so... All right. There's black, so that's not bad. Let's draw. I'm gonna play this and... I think I just pass. I could I could Deadly Dispute, but then I have to discard the hand size. And I have a Spell Pierce, so I don't feel like I'm in dire need to do that. I would like to find an answer to that shark. I'm kind of wondering if because I have Snuff Out in my deck, I should just... Yeah, I should have probably upkeep Deadly Disputed to look for Snuff Out. But now I can I can let an attack happen. All right, let's cast Deadly Dispute, Sacking Mana Vault. Look at that combo. Disgusting. 
and it didn't hit anything. But if he's leaving up mana for hanger back, I don't mind that. I kind of want Falconer to play something this turn. Something like kind of bad though. I guess I always want my opponents playing cards that aren't very good. Ooh, Underman Adventure. No, 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 no. Let's let's wait on that one. At some point, maybe, but not right now. Oh man, Stern Scolding would have been good against that shark. So I have nine cards in hand. So currently, I can't. Library. I have. Uh, if I play Lingering Souls, I. I won't build a library and use Urtai, and I kind of want to keep Urtai up. Do I want to play one of my tap lands? Mm. I feel like I have enough lands that I can just discard Concealed Courtyard and not have to worry about a tap land. I think that's probably for the best. If if his play, best play last turn was the Undermountain Adventure, I kind of expect that to be the play this turn too. But we'll see. Oh, Nissa. Okay, so that actually works out fine. Let's draw a card. And let's go Spell Pierce on Nissa. And I, I am at some point going to have to deal with the 5-5 five, five Shark. Or Shark Token, rather. But... Now I get to go Urtai, down to six cards in hand, but still have Library. All right, you know, I take back everything I said about Library. Library's been amazing <laughs> this draft. I guess I did pick one and try to draft around it, but it's worked out really nicely. And then I'll block here, because I think taking out the hanger back now seems like a pretty good deal. Okay, and then you get a token, don't care. Draw a card. Memory Lapse would like kind of put this game away. Though, honestly, I think I'm winning by a lot, even without it. Oh, baby. Um, I do have to watch out that I don't play too many cards. Let's go Lingering Souls. And I think, I really don't like it, but I think I miss on playing a land here. Because I want to be able to cast Memory Lapse, but still use Library. So I've got to monitor my uh, card, rate of card playing here. Because if you go Underbound Adventure this turn and I Memory Lapse it, and you don't have a 6 land to animate the Incubator, Falcon Eye is in a little bit of trouble. Even if the Incubate token gets animated, I'll just take 5. And then at some point I can lay line Binding it. I can also just block it with Lingering Souls for some amount of time. Annoying to not hit a land drop when you're drawing two cards a turn, but if I miss the land drop, I wouldn't be drawing two cards a turn. Treachery on the Lingering Souls token. All right, I'm going to memory lapse that. <laughs> That's something to be concerned about next turn. Oh, man. Deadly Dispute against Treachery. Got to watch that one. Mm -hmm. So, do you attack with the Thopter token? I mean, I guess it's kind of immaterial. Like, you can attack and trade, or you can leave it back to block and trade, either one. All right, let's draw. Dark Confidant. I don't hate Dark Confidant. Send. Okay, block. And then Swamp Lingering Souls. And I have enough mana up to use Leyline Binding or Stern Scolding, not both. But I think Treachery is going to land. My plan is probably to just end of turn Leyline Binding the Treachery. Because then I'll go down to five cards in hand, but I'm assuming I'll, I'm going to have Dark Confidant in play on my turn, and I'll go back up to seven. And Treachery is a good play here. Getting to make two plays in the same turn is pretty good. But it's just not the end of the world. You get to steal a 2-1. It's not like you generated, you know, it's not like you want Glorybringer on top five lands or something like that. So currently we know Undermountain, Adventure, and Treachery are two cards in Falconize hand. 
probably not all, no no not a land because I memory lapsed treachery last turn hasn't played a land for a few turns Emery huh what does that mean um yeah I guess I'll turn scolding the Emery I, I, I don't I think if the next thing you're gonna do is animate incubator I guess Falcon I was worried about a counter spell so Went with the like basically make three plays in the turn. Amory plus elf plus uh, transform the token. That works for me. Okay, so now I have five cards in hand, but I'm about to go up to seven here. I have revealed a swamp. Let's draw with library. Yeah, library's been just amazing. Oh, and there's cryptic. All right, the game's over. Um, let's see. Cryptic, yeah, let's go play Spar's Headquarters to make it so... It's basically like Leyline Binding, it's one cheaper, so it's like you get a discount. <laughs> All right, uh, Leyline Binding. The Incubator Token. And that'll do it. Master class in Library of Alexandria, I will say that. Uh, do I want... Explosives that can blow up all the incubator tokens. Cut down kills. It doesn't kill the chrome host seed shark. It kills elves and emery. And then there's settle. There's upheaval. I don't know. Maybe damnation. How many black sources? Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven with Lorien revealed. Eight with treasures. Or nine even with treasures. I mean, I could play Damnation. It feels like my one-for-one one removal is pretty good, though. Nissa's, Nissa will be annoying when it happens. There's also Archfiend, but that's pretty bad against Treachery. Atroxa is, too, but Atroxa is just so good. Like, some amount of the time I'll get to Atroxa into Grief and immediately cast Grief, you know? So, I think I'm going to run this. All right. So, my teammates are doing Ds here. Yeah, J-Bro ended up losing, so we're up 3-1, and now I'm up a game here. Fortunately, couldn't get Guy's Cradle into this deck. Even with the Lingering Souls, I don't think that would be a good idea. All right. Deadly Dispute was amazing that game, though. That was cool. And and I do look forward to trying to Deadly Dispute uh, a Treachery. All right, on the draw here. No library, but... Oh, this hand is so good, though. Turn 1 Concealed Courtyard. Turn 2... I, and I assume on turn one I don't have to use swords, and then I can Lorien Revealed for a Tundra. And now that I've drawn Island, do I still want a Lorien Revealed for a Tundra? Because I can't get Spara's Headquarters here. I don't think, like, because turn two I, I want to play an untapped land. Play one Toughness Creature. Ah, oh, damn. Mm. I still think I just do this, and I think I just do get Tundra. And then I play the Tundra. And then I pass with Bowmasters up, and then, ooh, I've got Rafine Currency Converter. I like that combo. Rafine on turn three with two creatures that can attack is really nice. The only way this gets better is if Falcon Eye plays something that gets hit by Bowmasters, then this game's going to be really hard for him to win. Trinket Mage, sure. That I cannot stop. And what are we trinketing into? Hanger Backwalker, okay. Um, I think I still just play the Bowmasters here. Bowmasters you. And then land. Play Rafine. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna definitely gonna attack with the Orc army. I'm questioning whether I attack with the Bowmasters too. The, the thing is, if I attack with the Bowmasters, I am committing to discarding two non-lands to make it a three-three. And I already have a Talisman, so it's like in my top two cards, will I find a non-land that I want to discard? Because I don't really want to discard. Atroxa, Currency Converter, or Talisman. Uh, the problem is, no, then I then I pump the Orc and they just eat the Orc army. So let's just attack with the Orc army. 
And I think I just discard the talisman here. Talisman doesn't seem like what I'm doing right here. I do have to discard a non-land. Next turn, I've got Mesmeric Fiend up. I guess Treachery on the Bowmasters would be kind of annoying. Oh, Mishra's Workshop into Oko. Oh, okay. What is this? Into Hangerback. And then make a food. Uh, sure. Let's get Currency Converter into play. Do I want to Swords? I kind of want to Swords the Hanger back here and attack. And I'm going to attack Oko here. And I'm going to connive onto Rafine. Now I have to discard two cards. And I was hoping to draw one more land. Because then I could play Mesmeric Fiend and have Spell Pierce up. But I guess I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to accept that Spell Pierce is no longer up. Well, I definitely want to discard Cryptic Command. And I think... I think I just discard... Do I just discard Atroxa? This is tough. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of mana out of this Currency Converter. I'm going to discard the Cryptic and Bob. I'm going to hit Oko for four here. Land Mesmeric Fiend you. Sylvan Library. All right, well, I guess next turn I'll discard Spell Pierce, or I'll discard it to the Currency Converter. Sylvan doesn't even do much with the Bowmaster out. Next turn, Oko the Bowmaster? Do we draw a draw seven or something? I guess we did. Um, do I want a currency converter and put, I guess I do kind of want to put Cryptic back into my graveyard and have to draw that in with uh, the draw seven. Okay, okay. Well, I still was very far ahead on board, and I do like this hand. Hope we don't have like a big, oh, Mind Slaver. You can't activate it. Interesting. You're at 20. I can attack for 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13. Mm -hmm. What do I have to deal with Mind Slaver in my deck? I guess I'll find out. Let's just, it's going to start by attacking with Rafine regardless. Let's attack Oko with that and attack Falcon Eye with these. And then I guess I'll connive onto the Rogue token. I guess Cryptic Command would be a card I could draw. Oh, Leyline Binding. Okay. So I need to discard four cards. Leyland Binding costs three mana right now. It's good to know. Let's discard Razor Verge Thicket. Lingering Souls. God the Shrine. So I think I'm going to play the Islander. Maybe I, maybe I discard Island. Or maybe I discard Lorien Revealed. Yeah, that seems fine. And then, yes, on all these. Uh, no, actually, no on Lingering Souls. I know I can just put it back, but I want to have the option of putting back a treasure. All right. Take some damage. Now, I have four, five, up to six mana. If I'm going to play Binding, I should play Spar's Headquarters. So I guess I'm going to Exile Grief, Exile and Deadly Dispute, and Grief You. Chromatic Star, Sensei's Top. Oh, this is such a bad hand. I guess I'll still just take the Undermount Adventure. Place Bar's Headquarters. Cast Leyline Binding for two mana. And Leyline Binding, the, the Mind Slaver. And then past the turn, I've got Stern Scolding and Swords to Plowshares up. I mean, maybe I should have taken Sensei's Top, I guess. It seems like playing an Activating Top isn't really going to do much. Oh. Stern scolding that. Yes, indeed. Well, we are cruising to a 2 0 here. You love to see it. Chromatic Star is fine. Rafine is awesome this game. Or this this draft, rather. 
add a blue. There's just not much more you can do. Next turn is 3, 6, 10, 11, up to 15 damage maybe. 17, 18 actually with making a 2-2. Two, two. And boom. That'll do it. Nice little 2-0 start. And uh, let's see about round 3, shall we? All right. Time for round 3. Playing against Mac, who's on Boros Aggro. And... Yeah, I will keep this hand. It's got my my combo. Mana Vault plus Deadly Dispute. Turn one Esper Sentinel. I hate Esper Sentinel with a burning passion. All right, let's just play Rafine's Tower. I just don't want to play Mana Vault into Grief if it's going to involve me getting Esper Sentineled. Okay. Snuff out anyone? No? All right, I guess I'll play Dark Confidant. Huh. didn't feel like there was a spot to I don't really want to pitch cast grief here that just doesn't seem like it's going to win the game so I guess this turn Mac can make Esper Sentinel into a 3-3 three, three and attack for 3 but then doesn't attack with Luminarch or maybe attack with both and then I, I'm probably I'll probably take it oh Adeline yeah, okay should just attack with the Luminarch also, honestly. But yeah, I'll take it. Go to 14. Flip. Spell Pierce. It's not very useful. Mm. Mana Vault, you draw your card. And we're going to be down a game in a second here. Sideboarding gets a little better for me, but Lightning Helix and Portable Hole. I guess I'll take Lightning Helix. Pass. But just one, two, three on the play. I, it's not even like you needed much more past that. I mean, sure, a portable hole and dark confidence also good, but mostly it's that Mac rattled off the one, two, three on the play, and they were a good one, two, and three. Yeah, all right, we're done here. Um, I definitely want damnation and cut down. Probably explosives. I don't really want spell pierce. Kind of don't want impulse. I just feel like you don't have time for that sort of thing. I actually still want a Troxa. I think it just feels like a Troxa is too good to to leave out, and just casting a Troxa is great. Deadly Dispute is marginal, but I still think is probably good enough. Memory Lapse Remand are fine. Currency Converter I think is fine. Yeah, this matchup actually isn't isn't terrible. I mean, I'm not going to mulligan that other hand. And I got run over, but one snuff out, and it turns very different. I actually kind of don't like Mesmeric Fiend, especially if I have Damnation. Oh, I probably won't settle the wreckage, too. Maybe Explosives isn't good. It looks kind of awkward. All right. I am on the play now. Let's see if we can put up a little more resistance. Uh, all right. Keep. This hand's a little weird, but I think this hand's actually pretty good. I get to go Island Currency Converter, and then turn two, I can cycle Lorien Revealed and play a tapped Godless Shrine, or cycle Lorien Revealed and play, maybe I just play Spara's Headquarters, and then I can tap the Currency Converter to immediately make a 2-2, and then on turn three, I'll have Spell Queller up and Deadly Dispute with like the 2-2 from the Currency Converter and other stuff like that. So. I don't mind it. Okay, we're at five and two. So if I win this, I lock up not losing in a tie. And then, of course, it gives us well our way to winning. And I do like this hand, especially if Mac is considering mulliganing. I mean, this is a one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> which is funny, though. I guess the he did, in fact, mulligan. The Lorien revealed it's not really a five. It's going to... Gonna be getting out of here. Portable hole? No. Uh, all right, fine. Um, I'm just gonna get Spara's headquarters here and play it. That was annoying. That was annoying. Sir Ginger. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, hmm. I think. I think I'm going to do this 
and pass. I think I think I do want to snuff out the Sir Ginger here. And then all spell color, whatever this is. Oh, that's a good spell color one, actually. There's a Troxa, okay. Land, hit for two. Really wanted that currency converter going. Is this, if this kid's killing my spell queller, I actually kind of don't mind it. Oh, it's a Stoneforge Mystic. I don't love that. Because then I get to deadly dispute it away and get a treasure and get closer to Atroxa. We got nothing? Okay. Um, I guess I attack still. I think that's fine. And I have memory lapse plus dispute up. <laughs> if I want, I could deadly dispute away the spell queller and then memory lapse. It's Cauldra complete. Yeah, I have Cryptic Command for that if I draw another blue. Luminarch. Mm, I think I do Memory Lapse the Luminarch and I take five. I just hope to draw blue here would be really nice or a spell that does something. All right, that's pretty good. Let's, I'm just going to do this now actually. Bounce that and draw a card. Okay, I'm, I'm very close to just casting Atroxa. So I need Mac to not have too much. I mean, he's got Luminarch and one unknown card. And Luminarch Aspirant doesn't really do that much here. I mean, not this turn. It will next turn. Okay. Pump the Stoneforge to 2-3. Still presumably no attack. All right, a spell would be good. It would be good, but here we are. All right, pass. Oh, we had another equipment. Lion Sash. Um, okay, okay. All right, I hope this is... Oh, I was really hoping that would be killing my spell queller. I might deadly dispute this turn. We'll see. Because what I can do is I can Deadly Dispute, and then I just get to play Atroxa. And Atroxa is very good at uh, keeping keeping me alive here. The fact that he gets a Dragon Engine doesn't matter too much. I guess he gets to equip Lion Sash to it, and that costs two. Yeah, I probably should not block here. Let's just... Take it, go to six. Brutals are just not use mana for multiple turns, but here we are. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, let's just cast our Atroxa and instant land artifact creature enchantment. Nice. So <laughs> instant, I guess creature is going to be Urtai artifact. Enchantment. So now I have to, to pick a land. Mm, I actually think I just get Swamp. Yeah. All right. That was pretty good. And then now you can discard the land that you didn't play last turn in order to get Sir Ginger back. I, th I wonder if Mac wants to get build up to seven mana to equip Cauldra, but that's just not going to not going to happen at this point. You have one turn to draw an answer to Atroxa or or you are not in good shape. <laughs> All right, we got there. Did have to show him settle the wreckage, which I don't love, but you know, what can you do? I actually do think I want explosives. Uh, Luminarch, Sir Ginger, Thalia are all twos. Mother runes, Giver runes, all ones. I feel like that's enough. Mm. Portable holes, another one. I could cut Spell Queller. I could cut Grief. I don't have any way to like cheat with it. I'm just casting it for four mana. It's kind of bad. I don't know. Maybe Dark Confidant's bad, but I like to, I like a card I can just cast on turn two. And a turn two Dark Confidant can attack and block. And then maybe draw a card. So, we'll see. Alright, any Stern Scoldings? Stern Scolding would be a pretty nice one to see in my opener. Cut down. 
this looks great to me. Um, I need to draw black, but I have a library. Oh no, what in the world? All right, well. Well, if I draw black mana, I think I still could win here, depending on what the rest of the start is. Uh, that's a pretty good one, but still, turn two Bowmasters kill Sir Ginger is pretty nice. All right, draw. All right, black source, come on. Come on, black source. All right, all right. I mean, we're not dead yet, but this obviously... All right, well, Dark Confluence, <laughs> not getting, not doing anything. Okay. I still think this hand is actually, like, I could still beat Max Hand here, especially since Esper Sentinel and uh, Orcish Bowmasters is kind of a funny combo. If he taps five mana for a play here, then yeah, maybe I don't. But I go to, I go to 13. Yeah, we're, this is still extremely winnable. I just need to draw a Swamp. Lion Sash. Draw in response. No. Uh, black source, come on. Well, it's not a black source. Do I want to cast that? It doesn't really do much for me. It gets eaten by Lion Sash. I think. As awkward as it is, I think I discard Damnation here. I'm just not going to get to to double black. No, come on. You're going to cast Cauldra now? This was like so still beatable without that. Now nah, we're not going to win now. I guess I could draw to see if I draw Memory Lapse. All right, well. Extremely winnable game if I had a black... But even with the soul ring draw, but without it, not there. All right, well, we'll see how this resolves. I think we're still in great shape. We're like up five, five three or something. And uh, I like this deck. This deck was good. I mean, this was a good library deck. Look, to go with library, we had Swords to Plowshare, Spell Pierce, Stern Scolding, uh, Bowmasters, Remand, and Memory Lapse. Look at all that one and two mana interaction. That was great. I was alongside Mesmeric Fiend, Grief, and Snuff Out too. Can't forget that one. So Leyland Binding is also a card I've gone up on. And overall, I thought this deck worked out really well. The biggest surprise, Rafine. Rafine was pretty good. So you're not always going to be Esper and have creatures. But if you are, then I think Rafine is good. So that was a cool discovery to see. All right. That'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you hanging out with me as I take library for a spin. You know, I... I, my mind's still open. I played the library and it was good. I will say that. And uh, I'll be back with another draft tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>